have any announcements except uh, any of you who have been and served in the military, could you please stand up to be recognized? Thank you very much for your service. I know Memorial Day is pretty much meant to honor those who passed away in the line of duty. However, I think it's very nice to recognize those of you who served time and came back. And thank you very much for your service. Other than that, I don't believe I have any other announcements. Does anyone else have any? Seeing none, let us begin worship.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word is near you. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, Faith comes from what is heard. Let us pray. Almighty God, your blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Mercifully give us faith to trust that, as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading today is from Acts chapter 1. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Word of God, word of life. Second reading today is from Revelations. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks to you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 24th chapter. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, well, here we are, 40 days after Easter. Today is Ascension Sunday. So not being a true theologian, what exactly do we do with Ascension Sunday? Well, according to the internet, there are several liturgical traditions tied to Ascension. We could carry torches in a liturgical procession, but burning down the church is not on my agenda. We could bless beans and grapes since they are apparently a symbolic feast for the dead in heaven. That seems pretty safe, but a little odd. And man, I hope there's more to eat in heaven than beans and grapes. Okay, moving on. We could use processional banners with symbolic lions and dragons on them. That we could do if we had them. Or we could elevate a figure of Christ through the roof. I'm not in favor of the last one since we already have way too many property projects around here already. I think instead of all these, we just need to move ahead to our gospel lesson. This is it. The disciples have seen it all. The teaching, the preaching, the traveling, the accusations, the crucifixion, the empty tomb of the resurrection, and then the appearances to the disciples that authenticated the risen Christ. Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene at the tomb, to Peter near Jerusalem that same day, 
to two disciples walking on the road to Emmaus, in the locked room on the evening of the resurrection, and to the disciples fishing on the Sea of Galilee. Now the disciples find themselves in Bethany, and it is time for Jesus to ascend to heaven. But there are a few more instructions. Jesus tells them that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. He tells them that you are a witness of these things, and see I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. So while Jesus is blessing them, he is carried up into heaven. And we know that the disciples worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. That, folks, is Luke's version of the Ascension. What's interesting is that Luke's gospel begins in the temple with the good news that John the Baptist will soon be born. Luke's gospel also ends in the temple with the good news of Jesus' disciples blessing and praising God after Christ's ascension. Luke not only ends his gospel with the ascension, but then he begins the book of Acts with another account of the ascension with the disciples asking questions. And that was part of our first lesson today. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And we know that the disciples did keep true to their word, and they did become witnesses. Now, spoiler alert, next week is Pentecost, and the disciples become filled with the Holy Spirit as Jesus had promised. It is after that that they go to all the ends of the earth or at least the ends of the earth that they knew then. So we have to wonder, did this whole ordeal make an impression on any of the disciples? Well, maybe a little. Here is what happened to our disciples, according to Christianity.com. Peter and Paul were both martyred in Rome around 66 AD during the persecutions of the dear emperor Nero. Paul was beheaded and Peter was crucified upside down because he did not feel that he was worthy to die in the same manner as Jesus. Andrew went to, quote, the land of the man-eaters, which is now what we know as Russia. Some Christians claim that he was the first to bring the gospel there. He also preached in Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey, and Greece, where, supposedly, he was crucified. Thomas preached actively in Syria and possibly as far east as India. The Marthoma Christians revere Thomas as their founder, and it is claimed that he died there when he was pierced through by the spears of four soldiers. Philip had a ministry in Carthage in North Africa and eventually in Asia Minor. It was there that he converted the wife of a Roman proconsul to Christianity. And in retaliation, the proconsul had Philip cruelly put to death. Matthew, our famous tax collector, ministered in Persia and Ethiopia. Some say he wasn't martyred, and others say he was, and was stabbed to death in Ethiopia. <laughs> Bartholomew went to India with Thomas, and then he went back to Armenia, then to Ethiopia and southern Arabia. Bartholomew converted Polemius, the king of Armenia, to Christianity. So the king's brother ordered Bartholomew's death by flaying and beheading. James, the son of Alphaeus, may have ministered in Syria. However, he met his demise when he was preaching in Jerusalem and was stoned to death by the Jews. He was then buried beside the temple. Simon the Zealot ministered in Persia. He was apparently killed after refusing to sacrifice to the sun god. 
Matthias was chosen by the apostles to replace Judas Iscariot. Matthias preached in Cappadocia, Jerusalem, modern-day Turkey, and Ethiopia. Some say he was crucified, and other sources say that he was stoned to death. John was the only apostle not to be martyred. He preached in Jerusalem and in Ephesus and started many churches in Asia Minor. <clears throat> Legend has it that the emperor Domitian cast John into a cauldron of boiling oil, but he came forth unhurt. So the emperor banished him to the island of Patmos for a year. It was while he was at Patmos that he wrote the book of Revelation. He died in 100 AD at around the age of 93 or 94. And that's what happened to our apostles. Did you know that the Greek word for witness has come to be known and used as the English word martyr? Now we too are called to be witnesses. Please don't take this that I think we should all be equally martyred. I am not in favor of that at all. But because Christ has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit too, Perhaps that means that we should be as bold and as daring as the apostles. But what would that look like in today's world? What would the radical work of the Holy Spirit look like in today's church? Well, it would probably mean acceptance and welcome of the minority and ostracized group populations, the LBGT group, the minority groups, the immigrant groups. It might mean reaching out and partnering with others to create a jobs program for those convicted of felonies. It might mean sharing our church building with another church that is smaller but in need of a church home. It might mean partnering with an entirely different religion partner that we are in full communion with. It might mean using our building to partner with folks who are teaching English as a second language or job skills like resume writing. It might mean doing things much differently than we have done in the past. I have to wonder if mainline religions find themselves declining severely because they are hampered by the hierarchy that leads them. Please don't get me wrong, no oversight is not a good option. We do need to report to someone. But those churches with a strict hierarchy in place search for answers but are frequently not given much instruction or help. We wait for direction that never seems to come. Perhaps it's time to discern our own direction with the help of the Holy Spirit. The disciples weren't qualified to do the jobs they were asked to do. They received on-the-job training, and sometimes they weren't great at their jobs. But they were led by the Holy Spirit and got the job done anyway. We have them to thank for the spread of Christianity but it is our job to be led by the Holy Spirit and continue Christianity for centuries to come. Are we up to being radical witnesses? I think it's time we give it a good try. Amen.
In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all of our sins. Amen. Peace. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. You may share peace with those around you.
set free from captivity to sin, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all creation. Holy One, ruler of heaven and earth, wash us in your Holy Spirit and make us witnesses to your resurrected life in this community. Let our fellowship be a sign to others of the presence of Christ, God in your mercy. Through thundering mighty waters, reveal your creative power at work in creation. Cleanse the air, land, and waters with the movement of your spirit and the participation of your people. God in your mercy. In faithful and diverse worship, turn all people toward you and your loving will for humankind. Bridge differences among traditions and across faiths. Unite us in mission for the sake of a world in need. God in your mercy. In the suffering and death of Jesus, draw near to those who suffer and for whom death approaches, especially those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hold them in the palm of your loving hand and give them rest. God, in your peace. Inspire us through the music, dance, and other arts ministries of this congregation with clapping, shouting, singing, playing, and moving. Let our bodies bear witness to the joy you alone can give. God, in your mercy. For victims of the mass shooting at Robb Elementary in Uvalde, Texas, we commend them to your eternal love. Grant healing and wholeness to the survivors who are wounded or traumatized and restore all whose spirits are maimed by such violence. God, in your mercy. For students and graduates, especially Ann Farner, at the end of this school year, May they find rest and refreshment this summer. God, in your mercy. For family and friends remembering loved ones who died while serving in the United States Armed Forces on this Memorial Day weekend, we especially thank you for those in our military throughout history who have sacrificed their lives for their fellow citizens and for us who came after. Be present with all the women and men who are serving in the military today. Let them live for the peace known only from you. Help us to be worthy of their legacy and keep us mindful of their service. God, in your mercy. Rouse us to remember the faithful witness of the saints who have gone before us. By their lives and the life and death of Jesus, Enlighten our hearts, give us hope, and lead us in wisdom. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Our Lord's Prayer. Let us pray with confidence the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Go in peace, tell what God has done. Thanks.